Fossil footprints are known as ichnofossils. Fossil dinosaur tracks are common in the Paluxy Riverbed in Glen Rose, Texas. Among these fossil dinosaur tracks are fossil human footprints. As far as we know at present, the use of spiral CAT scanners to examine the internal compression of the host rock by ichnofossils is a new technique. Let us take a look at a medical x-ray. Medical x-rays are an exposed film negative. X-rays expose the film, so if there is something blocking the x-ray source, like a bone, the film remains unexposed and when developed, it turns white. The less dense the material, the more the x-rays can penetrate and the darker the shade in the x-ray image. The spiral CT, or computer tomography, is essentially an x-ray machine that can make three-dimensional x-rays. The images are captured by a computer and assembled. The images can also be assembled into two-dimensional slices through the subject, and these are referred to simply as X-ray images. When it comes to the controversial human ichnofossils of the Paluxy, the preferred evidence is entire trails of tracks excavated from underneath undisturbed limestone in the presence of multiple authenticating witnesses. However, there have been a number of tracks that have come to light over the years where the history is unknown. Proper documentation simply was not done because the ichnofossil was found by a layman, or the track was not found in situ. One such track is the Delk track. It was collected in July of 2000 by Alvis Delk, an amateur archaeologist from Stephenville, Texas, who was wandering through the Paluxy. He flipped over a slab which had a pristine fossil dinosaur track on it. He took this home where it sat in his living room for eight years. After an accident that left him in the hospital for many months, he needed to pay his bills and clean the slab in hopes he could sell the dinosaur track for a few hundred dollars. This is when he discovered the slab also had a human ichnofossil in it, which was still covered by dried clay. Because the slab was found loose in the riverbed, its original location is not known, and indeed there was the possibility that it was a carved track simply planted there by a forger. So Dr. Carl Baugh, director of the Creation Evidence Museum, conceived of the idea to use a medical CT scanner to look for compression in the rock matrix. The two tracks were originally made in mud, which has now hardened into rock. When a foot steps into mud, it displaces the mud and compresses it in various areas. If this mud were to harden into rock, then the rock would still preserve the compression surrounding and underneath the tracks. When Paluxy dinosaur track cross-sections are exposed, either by a ledge breaking off across a track or by deliberate sectioning of a track by a scientist, there is often no visible compression effects in the rock matrix underneath the track. To be more specific, there is often very little compression underneath the track, but considerable compression surrounding a track, especially the toes. This has more to do with the foot displacing the mud in a fast, forceful way rather than compression by load bearing. This is counterintuitive and has hindered dinosaur track research over the years. Sectioning a track is destructive and while the presence of compression effects in the matrix can be very instructive and definitive, the lack of compression effects within the matrix provides no real conclusions and is not necessarily indicative of a carving as some have suggested and so CT x-rays can play a role in non-destructive examination of compression within the rock. The Delk track was taken to the Glen Rose Medical Center's Spiral CT Scanning Laboratory where over 800 x-ray images were produced from the track. Let's examine these x-rays starting with the scan looking straight down on the slab. The scale is in centimeters. As we enter the rock we are viewing a thin slice only a few millimeters below the surface. We are inside the dinosaur track and inside the human track. Remembering that these are x-rays, white represents the most dense rock, whereas the darker the shade, the less dense the material. At this point, the rock appears as white, but the tracks are black because there is no rock inside the tracks, and thus no resistance to the x-rays. There is a distinct white line of higher density rock around both the dinosaur track and the human track several millimeters across. This is higher density in the rock caused by displacement of mud from the two tracks. As we proceed further into the rock, 
we stop 12 millimeters below the surface of the rock. We can clearly see the toe impressions on the humid track and higher density rocks surrounding them. This higher density could be from mud displacement or it could simply be the higher superficial density of the rock that someone carved through to make toes. However, traveling a further 2.4 millimeters into the rock, we are now underneath the smaller toes of the human track and there are clear compression artifacts in the matrix underneath them. Deeper into the rock, we can see heavy compression of the matrix underneath the arch of the humid footprint. This is the area where there was the most visible mud displacement and also the area where both the human and the dinosaur track compressed and displaced the mud. The side scan is much more revealing. We begin our scan from the right hand side of the track. The image in the top left corner is the approximate position of the beam in the rock and the actual x-ray is in the bottom of the picture. The scale is in centimeters. As we enter into the rock, we can see a higher density surface to the rock about 1.5 centimeters thick. This higher surficial density is caused by crystallization over time. Similar effects have been discovered in core drill samples taken from the concrete of hydroelectric dams. Looking closely, one can see that this higher density curves down following the contour of the bottom of the dinosaur toe. The higher density surface is also intact underneath the toes of the human track, indicating there was no removal of material. They are both genuine fossil footprints, neither one has been carved. Moving further into the side of the rock, we pause for a moment immediately in front of the depression made by the big toe in the human track. The x-ray shows a higher density area immediately in front of the large toe. This is clear evidence that the big toe compressed the mud in front of it as it apparently hooked into the mud while making the track. There is also higher density rock underneath all of the other toes in the human track. As we scan through the rock to the point immediately underneath the knuckle of the big toe, we can also see higher density rock several centimeters deep where the big toe pinched the mud underneath its knuckle. Continuing across the rock, we get to the point where we can see the displaced mud between the dinosaur toes, which was also compressed by the human footprint. The compression of the mud is very visible as higher density rock up to four centimeters deep. This is far deeper than any of the superficial density variations and once again affirms the authenticity of both tracks. If either of these tracks were carved, it would be visible as a lack of density in the rock. After all, to carve the rock you are removing material, not making it more dense, and the carver would have to cut through the higher superficial density. But note that this higher density surface is absent from the heel of the dinosaur track. This was because of forward locomotion. The displacement occurs at the front of the track, not the heel. This is the only part of the track where it could be argued there is no evidence of compression, and thus may have been carved. But who would carve only the heel of a dinosaur track? Instead, this affirms the compression visible elsewhere as the heel is a large surface area open to the x-rays. The absence of higher density in various places throughout the rock shows that these variations in density are real and not misreading of the x-rays or a miscalibration or misuse of the CT scanner. It also rules out acid etching by a forger. Some have claimed to have carved dinosaur and human tracks in the past using acid to etch the surface and hide the tool marks. Acid etching would actually lower the density of the rock surface, not increase it. Furthermore, while some have admitted to forging tracks in the past, these forgers never carved both dinosaur and human tracks together because they simply would not sell. As we finally get to the heel of the human track, we see a layer of higher density rock immediately beneath the heel. It is considerably thinner than the high density rock in the front end of the track and thins to absence just like the dinosaur track. Again evidence of forward locomotion. If the track was carved it would have removed higher density rock on the surface. Instead the high density rock is present everywhere except the heel authenticating it as a genuine fossil human footprint in Cretaceous rock. Some skeptics have claimed that a medical CT scanner could not be used for the analysis citing that industrial scanners have higher resolution and power. While this is true, the higher density in the rock is several millimeters to several centimeters thick and wide. It is easily seen by the 1.2 millimeter resolution of the medical scanner. 
Also, medical CT scanners have been used by universities for mapping fossils still in their matrix. The resolution that is needed completely depends upon the application, and in this case, the lower resolution was far more than adequate. CT scans will be a powerful tool in analyzing ichnofossils, interpreting the compression of the matrix as tracks are made in stride, standing, stopping or starting, and in turning. They are also invaluable in authenticating or refuting loose slab ichnofossils of which the history is unknown or questionable. In the case of the delt track, it is incredible proof that man and dinosaur lived contemporaneously.